All right, I got the. Oh, I'm, so lucky. I'm sorry, man. See if you could hurry and just fix it back for me. Right. Oh, this. Oh, that's it. Where's the cord so I can test the sound? We will assist you with all your tax needs. We are a team of CPAs and IRS enrolled agents. If you are audited, our audit protection team will represent you at no out of pocket cost. We provide three years audit protection and a year identity theft protection. So you can have to mind without fear of audit. Call our team of tax agents. This is going to be as like a mounted. This. Okay. Flash Radio 94.3 Rated Dance Hall. I need to get this in. So I can say that. But this was going to go in with me. Mm -hmm. That's your head. That's African. Okay. That's for your levels, for your for your record, for your Facebook Live. Right. Using this, my brother. Yeah, yeah. We're breathing the gas. Seriously. Flash Radio 94.3 New Jersey. You want to answer that, don't you? I bet it's killing you seeing that soft glow just you inches get your mic away. Set up in so that we are just done. Tell you something, or maybe ask you something. Oh, come on, answer it already. Don't quit, so don't press down on the keyboard. That wasn't my fault. Next time, ignore your inner thoughts. Don't text and drive. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Council and your friends here at Splash Radio. Oh, they The headphones for the guests in my set up. Flash Radio 94.3. Ready. Dance Hall. They're both coming in, so I need the chairs. Hip Hop and R&B. African. Disco. Eric. Oldies, but Please let me test it. Hi, this is Jenny Jackson. We're Push it down. Seriously. Flash Radio 94.3. Jersey. Oliver Samuel is here, and I just want to invite you to come out to the People Profile Awards Sunday, June 18, 2017, at the Bailey Hall, right up there in Fort Lauderdale. Guess what? Is he saying it's uh, working? Me will be the recipient of the prestigious Lifetime Awards. Uh, don't take out one syllable of the meaning of the word prestigious. A black tire fear, nothing less. We are not what you have to do. We have a point and straight. That is a yeah, it's got an oscillator, right? No, no, it's not a point and straight. Okay, taking it to another level. <laughs> Let's say you have to stretch. You know what I mean? Stars among stars. 
put it behind. No, because what I do is this. The Sonic Energy in Jersey is back. Canal Productions called Red on Saturday, May 20th, the 6th annual. Bluefield Avenue, New Jersey. Doors open at 9 p.m. $15 before 11 p.m. Free shots and giveaways before 11 p.m. More after. after. Featuring music by Starboy, Snuff, and JoJo. Double Dog Sounds from Philadelphia. DJ KD and the infamous Soka Mafia featuring Banks. Also the release of the Miami Rhythm from BPM Music. Don't miss the ultimate cool If I can get this out the way there. For more information, 973 Okay. Put the headphones on set. Hi, this is Mickey and Newman. Then, uh, we're ready. Box truck for rent for all your life moving needs. Anywhere within the North East Orange. Uh, where's Urban your headset at the end? Orange you got area. one? Uh, Fifty dollars a trip from Monday okay. through Thursday. All right. Fifty dollars from okay. Friday through Sunday. Call eight six two two seven nine nine three zero zero. That's eight six two two seven nine nine three zero zero. Answer that, don't you? I bet it's killing you seeing that soft glow just inches away. Sure hey, someone wants to tell you something, or maybe you. ask you so something. Sam, can you not have an oh, come have on, it kind of answer straight? it already. Okay. And then you may want to turn it. Is that high? It's on two. On one. Um, Put it on two. Just so we're clear. Yeah, that was a my fault. Next time, it's ignore your hot 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 And I'm just concerned about the lady. Brought to you by National Highway Traffic Council. And your friends yeah. here at Splash Radio. I just checked check yes, the mics. Radio. We're good. Back to Fort Bridget. New Jersey. Rich. Are we ready? Oh, let me turn this down. <laughs> So Ian, but I need you in that chair so that they oh, can Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so that we can make sure that the... So now, we need to... Can we slide that? Because you got a little space over there because I don't have no space on this thing to get this thing here. This is where, where my... Let me, let me get that mic. No, no, leave it there. Leave it there. That's fine. We I'm waiting talking waiting about I have no space. I understand. But these... Right, so what are we trying to do now? I'm just trying to, just trying so to, I can get in. No, I, I'm not in. My question to you is, do we have all the headphones set? Yeah, there's one that's missing. Okay, you take care of the headphones. I'll take care of the okay. camera. Okay. All right, stand by, Eric. Well, I don't know some Mr. G represent for 94.3 FM Splash Radio. We don't splash out the music on them. Your attention, please. This is no ordinary show. Covering news and information for Essex County, New Jersey, and beyond. This is the Eric Dawson Radio Show. Broadcasting from 94.3 Splash Radio. Now, here's your host, Giving it to you like only he can. It's Eric Dawson. Hey, this is Eric Dawson, and this is the Eric Dawson Radio Show, 94.3 FM. Call at number 973-457-8000. Again, it's 973-457-8000 to listen through your mobile devices, 213-493-0287. Again, 213-493-0287. Eight seven. We're tight up in here today. Yes, we are. No, no, I'm no, no. I said we're tight up in here today. 
Oh no, we <laughs> are tight up in here today, <laughs> and we're gonna be even tighter. Now, now can can I bring them in? You can. Can you do me a favor when, I you, can. when you go out there? Yes. I think my my um, tablet is somewhere on the uh, on the counter. Okay, um, let's do what we right. gotta do. And then and then yeah, that would be helpful if you could do that. So listen, guys, the call in number is 973-457-8000. Again, it's 973-457-8000. You're listening to the Eric Dawson Radio Show, co-host Ian Burroughs. This is our wrap-up Friday, but um, we're going to do something uh, uh, different today. We've got uh, Judge T in the house, and uh, we got Rosalind in the house, so we've got uh, you know some experts on, on the law. Here and we're going to be talking about an array of topics, uh, including the um, the uh, idea that we have uh, a birthday uh, to celebrate today. El Haj, uh, Malik El Shabazz, uh, known uh, also as uh, Malcolm X. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, oh, we need a laptop. Oh no no no! I can bring my just my phone. Oh, okay. So we got you got yeah. that's mine. No, I got one in there too somewhere. This is yours. Yeah. Do you see my? I got a, a tablet out there somewhere. If if not, um, hmm. Well, so no, no. I'm just looking for my tablet. That's all. So, um, but we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, um, we're gonna begin this discussion. You ladies can have a seat, and we're gonna try. It's gonna be cozy anywhere. Well, I, you know what? Ian had a big. No, no. Just put it back. Don't worry about it. No, put it back. Put it back. Oh no, no. Put it back. Don't worry. Where are you sitting? I'm on the end. I think. Okay. I think. So, uh, Ian is going to uh, indicate where folks uh, should be seated. I know he was a little sensitive yesterday. Well, um, all I'm saying is keep your hands to yourself. That's all I'm no, saying. No, no. I, I got water and I, you know, I That's got my I'm stuff saying. over here. That's what I needed for water. Yeah, two waters. You know, um, but um, what, what, what's the issue? OB, you have any that's cold? These are so temperate. anyway, Real should we take another commercial, uh, OB, before yeah. we get set? All right. All right. So let, let's do that. We're, we're going to get this worked out. We'll be right back. When you do this too, you got my spread in. Trying to hook up. Dance hard. Soca. Hip-hop and R&B. 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 Disco. Oldies but good. Hi, this is Janet Jackson. We're bridging the gap. Seriously. Blast Radio 94.3, New Jersey. Oliver Samuel is here. And I just want to invite you to come out to the People Profile Awards Sunday, June 18, 2017 at the Bailey Hall, right up there in Fort Lauderdale. Guess what? Ah, we will be the recipient of the prestigious Life Island Awards. Don't take one syllable of the news. So prestigious. It's a fear. Nothing less. Yellow man, get your glass here. Uh, and that is a great sure they don't for us. No, never be the recipient. Ha, 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 taking it to another level. Let me just... Not them, not that family. And stars among stars. And it's so dangerous. Stars push up on the turns with the crazy. And it's all about who is this weekend. And that's why I'm going to greet them with what the... Oh, my God. 
From Philadelphia, DJ KD and the infamous Soka Mafia featuring Banks. Also, the release of the Miami Rhythm from BPM Music. Saturday, May 20th, don't miss the ultimate cool crib. Soka in full extra. You don't want to miss this. For more information, 973-640-2452 or 973-342-3832. Cool, 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 Soka in full extra. Hi, this is McGoomin Moving, box truck for rent, for all your like moving needs, you anywhere within the Northeast Orange, Irvington Orange areas. $50 a trip from Monday through Thursday. $60 from Friday through Sunday. Call 862-279-9300. That's 862-279-9300. Alright, are we coming back from... You want to answer that, don't you? I bet it's killing you seeing that soft glow just inches away. Hey, someone wants to tell you something, or maybe ask you something. Ah, oh, come on, answer it already. Um, just so we're clear, that wasn't my fault. Next time, ignore your inner thoughts. Don't text and drive. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Council and your friends here at Splash Radio. Flash Radio, 94.3, New Jersey, Rich. On the page. Splash Radio, 94.3, Reggae, Dance Hall, Soka, Hip Hop and R&B, African, Disco, I'm going to need to the board. Did you find your iPad? Large of Road Boy, Mr. Lowe. Shut it up. Ah, yo, the best the station on the planet. Ah, uh, Splash Radio 94.3, New Jersey. Okay. How many more? Large of Road Boy, Mr. Lowe. Shut it up. Ah, yo, the best station on the planet. Ah. Stand back. Hold on for this. There you go. One more. Well, then, Mr. J represent for 94.3 FM Splash Radio. We'll no. splash out the no. music on them. Shoot. Radio Show. On 94.3 FM Splash Radio. We'll splash out the music on them. Shoot. 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 Something is feeding through. All right. So, yeah. push the button. There we are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I can barely hear myself, but can you guys hear me? I, I can. can hear you. I can hear you clearly. Cool. You can hear me clearly. Excellent. Um, so, welcome back from technical ladies. difficulties. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but we're working it out. <laughs> but welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having us. Uh, yes. It's Friday. It's warm. We appreciate you guys being in here dealing with the environment that is usually uh, filled with testosterone. Uh, Ian uh, was happy to have uh, some estrogen in here. Can we start this again? Go this ahead, is the Ian. Eric Dawson radio show, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, Ian. That is Eric Dawson down the far end. My name is Ian Burroughs, and <laughs> I want the pleasure to introduce these two ladies up in here. Can I do that? You can go ahead and do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just ladies and gentlemen. The cues here. We have two. All right, I'm going to describe. Did, I the, wish I had my drum roll. Okay, well, I don't have it. <laughs> if we can get a drum roll going on. We can do it at home, right? Get a little drum roll going on at home, right? 
we have two ladies up in here. Now, if you can just imagine the embodiment of an Angela Bassett, Alina Horn, with the brains and sensibility and knowledge of of a darn law library up in here, with with a combined uh, experience of forty plus years in law. Ladies and gentlemen, we have two people. And black. Yeah. See. That was that's oh, oh, okay. We have two ladies up in here. Two sisters Cause there's some up in here. There's some people who are listening and oh, not I watching. Oh, I can't take it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we have <laughs> Judge Seku in the building, affectionately, affectionately known as Judge T. All right, all right. And Rosalind Charles Esquire in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Was that was that, was that an okay intro? That was it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the intro you wanted to give. We appreciate I'm, I'm, it. Oh, I'm gonna say it's okay. I, I thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> well, remember we were talking yesterday about a Jerry Springer kind of opening, right? Which means you'd have to jump over them and jump on well, me. And I mean, my heart is going pitter patter right now. Well, that's what you said was going to happen. I have. That's a, a sound I hear. I have a crush on both of these ladies independently for how they represent themselves professionally and personally. And, I mean, and look at them, ladies and gentlemen. If all of you have cameras, please, I mean, you understand what I'm talking about, okay? If I could blush, I'd be blushing. Oh, <laughs> man, <that's insane. laughs> Woo! Be still my heart. So, you know, Eric. Yeah? I've known these ladies for, for quite some time. In, in my business of doing bail bonds, and, you know, I'm kind of on a lower totem pole in that building. But, um, you know, run across them several times, and... And we've kind of lost touch over the past couple of years because everybody went in their own directions. Mm -hmm. And I was pleasantly surprised to come across a page on Facebook that says Sisters and Law. I was corrected this morning because I said Sisters in Law. No, no not Sisters woman. in Law. No, this is Sisters. We, sisters. Black women. We want you yes. to make sure you know that we two yeah. black women, S-I-S-T-A-S. -S -S. We do, mm -hmm. We're doing a little ebonics for you. And, 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 and there you go. All right, guys. <laughs> you know, guys. And when I saw these two ladies up there representing that, I was like, I was so intrigued. And I had to, like, reintroduce myself and, like, what is going on? What are y'all doing? And and then it, it evolved, and, 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 and here we are today. Well, I want to know what it is. What is sis does in law? Well, and, and law. And, not yes. in. And. Oh, and, exactly. Sisters in law is the brainchild of my... Uh, Sora here. I've known uh, Tokwase Seku, affectionately known as Judge T, for I guess almost 30 years. Uh, we'll Lord. just say it. And we went to law school together. <laughs> I was going to say 20 plus years, yeah, but she well, said 30. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 30 we went to plus. law school together. Uh, we've known each other professionally for all of that time. We've managed to find ourselves on the opposite sides of the table. When I say that, she was a public defender and spent a number of years in the public defender's office. I was a prosecutor, likewise spending a number of years there. We actually tried cases against each other. <laughs> but <laughs> they uh, were we, fine. Yes, they were. They were fine. And we can recall some of those times. But uh, she moved on to the Superior Court bench. I spent a little time on the Municipal Court bench. I'm mm -hmm. in a private practice, and that's how I know you, Anne, because right. I was doing some criminal defense work, and I right. would utilize your services from time to time to assist my clients in, in getting out of jail. And, and I would call you occasionally saying, I have a client or two that Yes, your yes, services. so we work well together. I've moved my practice a little bit more into divorce and family, but... Uh, we did pleasantries yes. because uh, on my side as the public defender, we had uh, a little different, uh, even though the clients did use uh, Bales Bomb, and by the time I was on the bench, I just give my pleasant smile whenever any of our brethren come into the courtroom. And... Uh, kind of have this, we have to keep our space Absolutely. Uh, on the Superior Court, so. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I tried not to blush every time I went into her courtroom. Um, but yeah, so, I, I just want to give a, a, add a little foundation or, for this, for our audience, uh, to give in a little bit about yourselves individually uh, leading up to where you are today. So, uh, any one of you choose to start as far as where you went to, uh, where you're from, where you went to law school, and your, your sorority, et cetera, so on, leading up to today. 
Okay, well, I'll, yeah, I'll start. Um, well, I'm from, I'm a Jersey Shore girl. I'm a true Jersey Shore girl. I'm from Asbury Park. Uh, born and bred. Snooky? Oh, yeah. Uh, what? Not what? Snooky, okay, not Snooky. Snooky, <laughs> and Snooky's from Long Island. I said, you know, wow. I said real wow. Jersey no, 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 Shore. I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just okay, sure. let's not get it twisted. For clarity's sake, that's all. I uh, graduated from Asbury Park High School. I originally uh, went to Embry, but my dad... Uh, was sick. I majored in education. I have a master's in special education, sign language, and uh, deafness rehabilitation, really? uh, and speech and hearing science. Uh, but due to some legal issues that my dad was having trying to get disability, uh, I was just so frustrated. He uh, actually died one month after I graduated from graduate school from New York University. Mm -hmm. I went to Kane. Um, I came from Embry, went to uh, Kane College in uh, Elizabeth. Uh, NYU for graduate school, came back, taught in the Jersey School Public Schools, uh, went to law school at night at Seton Hall where I met my Sora Rosalind. And when we, came, when we say Sora, we mean the only sorority that there is, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, uh -oh, what? 1908. You might get some calls. Okay. Oh, okay. You might get some calls. Oh, 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 o
as well as some other things that he was always involved with. Uh, from there, I went to the prosecutor's office. I stayed 10 years. Uh, Herbert Tate hired me uh, when I left. Uh, Pat Hurt was the prosecutor, but and at the time that I left, I was director of uh, narcotics, uh, narcotic investigations. Moved on to the bench in Irvington, spent four years there. Um, after a lot of controversy, specifically with uh, the then mayor, mayor who I still con consider a friend, Sarah Bose, uh, I moved on and I just developed a private practice. Um, had a partnership in South Orange with um, a colleague, friend, and sorrow of mine, Deborah Winston. Uh, it was Carrie Charles and Winston at that time. We hung out together for about six or seven years. I moved on, opened a wrap and smoothie shop in South Orange, and then I went back to the practice of law. And I, uh, my office is now in West Orange, and I concentrate primarily on divorce and family, but I still keep my uh, hands in on uh, the criminal side. Uh, tried a number of cases as a defense attorney. That was a change from being a prosecutor to a mm -hmm. defense attorney. But, but I'm here. I'm active. Uh, I've been somewhat involved in politics. And um, I'll just say at this point, I'm an independently minded woman. And I'm glad to Let be me, here with Sister I just Anna wanted to, I forgot one important thing. We are in the city of Orange, and I have to make sure that I send a shout out to Duane Warren, our mayor of Orange, who gave me the opportunity to sit uh, in the municipal court in, uh, in Orange. Out. So shout out to Mayor Warren. Right. So, you know, I wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. And it was shot down. It was shot down. It was shot down, man. By I was in, did it, did it by, have, by a teacher. Did it? Did it have something to do with the L stats? No, 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 no. Okay. I was in. You know, I was in the eighth grade. Eighth grade, I guess. Right, down. and before I went off to high school, you know, eighth grade teacher asked all the kids, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And I said, "I want to be an attorney." And you know what he said to me? It was a white uh, teacher, uh, Mr. Cavello, actually, uh, at Maple. He said, "Well, you know, Eric, forty percent of attorneys are unemployed." That's what he said to me. And so I thought about it, and, like, I didn't really have, I didn't have any attorneys in my family or anybody to, to go and check those stats with. And so literally, at that moment, I said, I got to change career. And it was done. Oh, well, you know, you I don't know, know this, exactly what this, he meant, but he might this, say some of us don't do anything, or some of us do do anything. Yeah, the, well, the, unemployed, the, 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 I don't know what that means. It's interesting because, and, and I know everybody here can kind of, there's been a lot of discouragement in, in the early ages and early education. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. It hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that has, it, it has not changed. That I think so, that when he looked at me, right, right, in North, black kid, that was something that was unattainable. Mm -hmm. And so I shouldn't even think about it. Shouldn't even have been Irrespective thought. of the fact that it may be that 40% of them were unemployed, but maybe it's because they weren't qualified enough to be employed. I don't think at that time that that probably was even true. He may have may have meant forty percent of the black <laughs> lawyers, uh, but I don't think he meant anything other than what you. But which, yeah, what, what you, you said, what you just said, to tear you down because um, that's hardly the case. Yeah. And so you know, uh, what is it? A couple months ago, I had Dr. Umar uh, Johnson on, and we were talking about the need for having role models in our schools, not just teachers, but role models for our children. And when you have uh, Caucasian teachers in particular, uh, they may not uh, have the same sensitivity that an African-American teacher might have in, in dealing with the different uh, children in, in the classroom. And so certainly I would say that Mr. Cavello uh, did not have the sensitivity. He did not embrace me, I don't believe, and, and, and tried to um, encourage that dream uh, that I told him that I had. Well, my neither of my parents, unlike uh, Rosalind, went to college. My father went into the military, and my mother actually got a GED. Um, but my aunt, my uncle uh, Leonard Jeffries and my aunt uh, Rosalind Jeffries, uh, they were very active in the African American community, teaching at City College, traveling around the world, back and forth to Africa. And it was through uh, are we talking him, about Dr. Leonard Jeffries. Dr. Leonard Jeffries, yes. As in, as in, here, here. Mm -hmm. The Dr. Leonard Jeffries. The only Dr. Leonard Jeffries. And, and, Who lives and, in Teaneck, New Jersey. Yes. One of my mentors. Well, and, and see, everybody give my, gives, uh, uh, well, uh, I call Uncle Lenny a lot of credit, but uh, my Auntie Rosalind yes, is the does. brain behind the doctor, because yes, they're does. both Dr. Jeffries. But, yeah, yeah he was the, uh, the person in my, my family that, uh, I, he, that college was not an option. 
You know, it's just like going from sixth grade to seventh grade, eighth grade to ninth grade, mm-hmm. you know, when he uh, approached me as a, as a young girl. Because um, I, I lived with my dad in, in uh, Asbury, my sisters and brothers lived with my mom in uh, Virginia. And uh, he, it was like, you're going to college. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I'm going to let you know what your destiny is. You're going in but that see, direction. that's part of the, the challenge, I think, in the African-American community, that uh, if you don't have role models, if you don't have somebody to aspire to be like... Or challenge. Or, cha- or somebody to challenge you, to tell you that you can be better than you think you can be, because that, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade, eighth grade, eleventh grade, you don't know. Uh, but you need those, um, and then I realized that when I moved into the suburbs, right, I lived in Westfield for a little while. Oh, see. Uh, yeah, and then I moved, I couldn't afford it, so I had to move, <laughs> had to move to Scotch Plains, right, <laughs> you know. You know, Zora Neale Hurston lived in Westfield. Zora Neale Hurston lived in Westfield. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. And Langston Hughes lived in Westfield. Well. Uh, and Paul right. Robeson was pulled through there also. So, yeah, it's, it's, She's trying to rent like, yeah. yeah. Westfield right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, why not? Well, look, I, I, look, like look, I, I got, I I got Bruce Springs to eat. <laughs> I <could afford laughs> yeah. there. So I guess my claim to fame is that uh, a home that I that I uh, lived in for a little while in Berkeley Heights, uh, Albert Einstein frequently visited that uh, home. So mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's all I got. Um, but but the um, what I realized when I moved into the suburbs was that the level of conversation even amongst the children changed because of what they were exposed to. Um, so my children were hanging out um, you know, in a soccer field with kids whose parents were dentists, doctors, lawyers, right, brain surgeons, and so um, and, they, and college was all they talked about. Um, and then it, the juxtaposition was uh, where I came from, which was Newark, which in college wasn't always the thing that was taught. It was just, can you get out of high school? Mm-hmm. You know, can you, like, I mean, there's major celebration for just graduating high school. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, an incredible celebration for just graduating the eighth grade. Like, I couldn't believe how many, liter- literally, how many graduation parties there are simply because a kid makes it through I think the that's eighth ridiculous. Grade. Yeah. I think the eighth grade proms, eighth grade graduation. But some parents, don't, they don't really believe that they have anything beyond that eighth grade prom or graduation to look forward to. Well, that's where the greater community comes in. Um, and, you know, it's cliche. It's been said over and over again. But it does indeed take a, uh, a village to raise a job. And uh, professionals and other individuals um, need to involve themselves and make that part of the conversation. Make college part of the daily Come. conversation. And it's not just the teachers, but there are other persons that, from outside the education system that should be invited in on a more regular basis as well as in, in volunteer their time to help change that conversation. Well, I'm going to throw a quick shout out because I came here this morning from the parent senior uh, breakfast. My daughter is graduating from Columbia High School in uh, South Orange Maplewood, and she is my hidden figure. She is going to Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, majoring in aerospace science. And uh, shout out to Leslie. Yes, shout out to Leslie Sekou. Uh, My my uh, my my daughter wasn't one of the cool kids, and she had her little group. They didn't care about being the nerds in the school. Uh, You know, she was in the Civil Air Patrol. She flies. She builds drones. Um, and, she, you know, it, it, it's like my source said there, you, for my daughter, uh, the option of uh, going to college was not something we talked about whether we were going to or wasn't going to. It was, okay, how much money to get to the best school that you can? Well, the best school in the country, in her area, we didn't pick them. They picked her. So education in the black community wasn't always secondary or tertiary in, in, in terms of thinking, right? I remember growing up, my grandmother who didn't get past the sixth grade um you know she was hell bent on teaching us how to read right we had to understand uh, basic mathematics we had to be prepared to go in in the school and then uh, my parents as well as my grandparents the greater family was involved in making sure that we got our homework done making sure um that um you know all of our i's were dotted and t's were crossed where do you think that fell apart in the black community because education isn't priority well, somewhere in the 60s, unfortunately, with that scourge of narcotics that, that just um, decimated many of our communities. Um, then it came back in the 90s. Yes, it came back in the 90s. It, but touching on that 
point, not so much where it went away, but uh, a few weeks ago I had the pleasure of being at the Montclair Film Festival and I saw a film called Tell Them We Are Rising. And it spoke of the rise of uh, education within the black community just after slavery and uh, how the black colleges were indeed developed for that purpose. And one of the, uh, the, the title of the show comes from a, a, a gentleman who was in one of the historically black schools and one of, I guess, the majority individuals, white, white individuals, was curious how these hell black slaves were doing here at, at the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gentleman said, tell them we are rising. And with education, uh, the community began to rise uh, through, despite all of the Ku Klux Klan and all of the issues that they had to deal with right. and fight. But folks were walking miles to go to college. Mm -hmm. um, leaps and bounds just to know how to read, write, and move themselves beyond what they had been. Uh, we don't appreciate um, what was lost during um, that well, time in slavery. That's calls that uh, school, uh, school choice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we in this generation don't necessarily appreciate what um, our brethren uh, who suffered from slavery actually went through. That dark out period where they could not learn, where they could not read. They looked at books and said that when the white man was looking at these books, he was uh, talking to paper, and then the yearning to learn. I, I don't know where that was lost. I don't know where the desire was lost, despite what I mentioned in the uh, um, the happenings of the 60s and, and I guess the subsequent riots. But that thought, has not, that thought has, has not decimated. I, 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 I was looking, I forget the brother with the crazy afro on CNN, he was doing a special and um, actually it was a, a sister who was interviewing this uh, white man who he teaches, and he is a college professor, uh, that, the, the, that the white brain is superior to the black brain and oh, that we yes. are just not capable. Now we have, we won't even go back to all of the, uh, all the discoveries of, of black people, which is, is beyond anything that they can know from the pyramids on down. But uh, this kind of ignorance has not uh, been lost in the South. I mean, if you go to Texas, Texas doesn't even teach uh, uh, slavery and black history. Uh, they don't even teach the Holocaust, so you know there must not be too many uh, Jews in Texas. So it really depends on on where you are. But the, the the bottom line is is that I have lots of friends in Texas, and I and after understanding how t how Texas school system works, and even uh, we did a whole uh, show on what's going on in North Carolina, it goes back to the parents, and mm. um, uh, we must choose to. Uh, put our children in as many things that we can that does a pos positive uh, pouring into their to their their brains. It, the academia has to be a part of what is normal. It can't be, you know, something that you think is a, a gracious opportunity. Not only it's a norm. It must feel like a norm that they and success is not an option. And that's the it's way I, option. you know. Uh, it, it, the only yes. option yes. is success, yes. um, and and I I, again, I, I think that, but, that. But, but but when you talk, so the, the four of us, we we had outside influences that led us to think the of way course. that we think, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But and my brother said this when he was in office. He was the councilman uh, in Newark, and I think that it was one of the things that led to an uphill fight to uh, to maintain his seat in the uh, twenty fourteen race. He said, uh, folks in our community suffer from arrested development. Mm -hmm. And people did not want to hear that. But I think it is the truth. And so because none of us do, we're able to have these discussions about what it takes and what's required and mm -hmm. how you can move forward. But for folks who are um, chronologically the same age as we are, but intellectually or socially, um, they're not quite there. They just really aren't. They, um, they, I, I believe that a lot of them are thinking like adolescents or, you know, teenagers or, um, their priorities are different. How do you, you know, that, do that's, 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 that's a sad state of affairs because if, if, if a friend of mine said, you know what a friend of mine mm -hmm. said? He said that the young kids are teaching the older people how to behave. 
So when you see whether you know, whether the young people well, were I, sagging, I don't know about that. So wait a minute. So the young people started sagging, and now you see 50, 60 year old guys sagging. You saw the young people wearing their shoes with their laces untied. Then the older people started doing that. You saw young people, and, and then the, the the older folk in our community uh, seem to be led by the younger folk as opposed to, as opposed to leading them. Is what he said. Well, I, I think, and and, maybe, and I'm not going to. Uh, I know you're you're from Newark, and I'm not. And um, I'm like I said, I came here from uh, uh, Asbury Park, and but I did spend you know uh, quite a few years in Jersey City, which is not too much unlike Newark. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe because I've spent the last 18 years in South Orange, and my daughter uh, went to private school up until high school. Um, but she was in Jack and Jill. She was in uh, the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, she was in a uh, uh, drone building, and uh, so it, it really, I, I cannot say, because on, on the one end of, of, of uh, South Orange is Newark, the, the back end of South Orange is, um, is, is, is Orange, mm -hmm. another end is, 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 is East Orange, so, I, but, but the reality is Newark has more uh, programs. There were so many things that I wish my daughter could have been able to be a part of, but because we didn't live in Newark, she uh, was wasn't able to uh, participate. It's a, it's really is about getting the word out because Newark has a lot of resources from the NJ Pack and all of the shows that they have there. To they they have uh, they, they 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 teach those kids their SAT prep courses for free. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I'm not going to begrudge any of us who sit here from the various suburban communities, and that's where we live. Mm -hmm. But um, some years back, uh, the professionals stayed within the community. We, we as a people, as we move on, we move out. And mm. um, when we move out, those role models move out. Mm -hmm. And they don't come back for the purpose of modeling. Um, so that it's it's as much on us as it is on them. So um, I mean, my mother grew up in the segregated South in Raleigh, North Carolina. Her parents were not educated, but uh, down the street was Doctor So and So, mm -hmm. and up the street was Lawyer So and So. Exactly. And when she worked, she worked at the f black pharmacists um, in the drugstore. So you know we have to look at how our communities have changed and. Um, <laughs> The urban, the more urban communities, unfortunately, are very isolated. And in, in addition to which, um, and also we have to look at the school systems that service uh, uh, the community. And I, I must say that I'm not too keen on the, on, I, I don't know what the nerd school system is doing. That's right. all I have to say, because it doesn't necessarily put out great products all the time, all the time. or at least not on a more consistent, on a very consistent basis. And why is that? Well, so, so you know, I, and I and I want to I want to have a conversation about that note because I think that look, you lived in Westfield, mm, right? Grew up. Uh, grew up in Westfield. I know when I went to buy my first home, the first thing I looked at was uh, how the school system was. Of course. And then I looked at the property taxes, mm -hmm. and then I looked at crime, mm -hmm. and then I made the decision where I wanted to raise my family. Um, so when you say that uh, folks get educated and then they move out, they don't move back, it's because they want to have, they're not interested in building, I'm right? They're begrudging. They, right, so I'm not, yeah, so they look and say, I've earned enough to be able to have that. Correct. I don't want to take the time to build this somewhere where it doesn't seem other people are particularly interested in building it as well, right? Mm. Um, and, and so in terms of, and I'm going to speak specifically about the Newark school system, um, you have, uh, there was an election, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday when you guys called in. There was an election that just took place. If you look at the people who are currently serving on the board, there's no way that anybody can reasonably believe that Newarkers, not just the people who were residing down the two-seater street, but Newarkers, the ones who voted, are really serious about education. When you look at who they have sitting atop a billion dollar institution. Well, I don't know who is on the board, and, and I don't know, I'm just going to take your word for the fact that um, maybe these individuals, in your opinion, well, are I not know. qualified. Well, not what qualified. I will say to you is this, okay. so, so okay. I'll give you, and, and, and I, I would challenge him to come on the show and prove no, me right. wrong, okay. uh, but the current president of the Board of Education is 
can't read beyond a sixth grade reading level. And I would Ooh. challenge him to come on and prove me wrong. Wow. Well, um, you know, Newark, Newark but, school systems held hostage think, for many, many years right. by the state. Well, it, it, and, and, and they've been clamoring for local control. Right. So here's the question. If you guys can't elect qualified leadership, why should the state give you back local control? Well, you know what? Uh, one of the things that I tried to do when I first first came um, off, off the bench was to... Uh, because I'm also a certified uh, Board of Education attorney. And um, I, w I had tried to go into East Orange and got the interviews and so forth. And, um, you know, it, you, you, the process of the voting and so forth. And on the day that the confirmation was supposed to happen, I was out in the hall. You, you know, you come in and uh, they decided that uh, given a million dollars to a firm that was connected to the uh, now city mayor was a better option. Uh, but I had did research myself and uh, Brenda Liss, I'm going to give her a shout out, and she's in the firm out in, uh, in, in Morristown, uh, on the, uh, the money padding that was going on in the, the East Orange school system. And um, you know, I was just asking for this, my, an equal salary, salary mm -hmm. what I made from the bench. But they had paid out over a million dollars mm -hmm. just to a firm and then another 30000 or so here and there to other attorneys. So a lot of it is, is politics, uh, and that's, well, that's just the bottom line. That's why the Board of Education was taken over in 1995, because they... I mean, they were all. It was riddled with nepotism, cronyism, uh, uh, inflated contracts, uh, a lack of accountability, uh, children failing. I mean, I, I, I'm a product of the Newark school system, and my dad, who was president of the board of education at the time that I was ready to go to high school, wouldn't let me go to Week Wake High School because it was a failing school, even though it was around the corner from me. So I tested in to, um, and, and made it into Science High School, and thank God there was a magnet school for me to go to. My dad wouldn't send my older brothers to Newark High Schools. They went to West Orange High School. Right. You know, my sisters went to magnet schools. They went to University High. You know, and, and so here we are in 2017 battling the same thing. And one of the other things that I put on my page yesterday is I said, look, you know, we have such failed uh, black leadership in our communities, and they're blaming white people for failures they're creating and fleecing our community. And then they're focusing us on somebody else who has nothing to do with it. They're putting up and propping up uh, candidates to run uh, who are... Uh, uh, unqualified, and then they get in office, and then they just make excuses for why things are still failing. Um, and meanwhile, they're reaching into your pocket with their left hand, and they're pulling money out. And that's Can what's I, going on. I'd, I'd like to interject and uh, maybe redirect a little bit. We have, because I want to kind of use these two ladies for their premier, for I guess their primary level or area of expertise, which is law, or, or rather one of their primary areas of, uh, of expertise and talk about a few things that we were considering talking about like in regards to uh, Trump's impeachment, the Muslim ban and oh, other sure. things of such, such of that nature to get their perspective on those subjects uh, as well while we have them here. Well, and um, one, just I guess maybe to close out what you're discussing mm -hmm. Eric, uh, you're speaking about leadership mm -hmm. and you're talking about it, at least in your in a, in a broad sense unqualified leadership mm -hmm. um, at the local level. Oh, we got who, that on the national. Been, well, you see, you're yes, always taking my line. Because you know I because, don't like their rank Because I was basically <laughs> going to say it's layered. Mm -hmm. You know, we go from the local level the individuals are put into office, are elected into office, they hire their friends, their unqualified mm -hmm. friends to to regulate and to run things, and mm -hmm. that repeats itself at the county level, or repeats itself at the state level, and then unfortunately now we've got a situation exactly like that and that's at why, the national and level. And I was trying to lay the foundation right. For, right. for the discussion about Donald Trump yes. by saying that We're at the, the local, absolutely, that at the okay. local level, things are so screwed up 
Right. I'm that sure. now when we when we go to have a conversation, it's like building a house we starting with the third floor. We didn't plan right? it like Right. You this. can't. You, but you can't we build a house like starting it. at the third floor. You have to build it right. um, by excavating and and building a solid foundation. Right. I and was just I was just trying to speed up the train because you right. know I mean we already are right. I mean the time does fly. We already. Well, I was looking at the clock, out. and I mean I don't know that we can get into a full blown discussion uh, about the impeachment of Donald Trump. We can start it, and then we can come back after the eleven o'clock break well, and continue absolutely. it. So, I want to ask you, just point blank, I mean, the, you have the Democrats who are, I mean, there's blood in the water. We don't, right? we don't, have, we don't have the House, so uh, that, that's the number one. And, and so, just to, to flip back, uh, ladies and gentlemen that are out there, you know, you, you're going to start having some elections coming up. And these mayor and gubernatorial elections mm -hmm. for the state is going to matter. Because as long as, as the 45th, has the both House and the Congress, and they usually come from our state senators and our governors, they're going to have power even if the 45th is put out. He is not dignified for me to even uh, speak his name. Um, so I, for me, he's the 45th. Now, the, the, the 45th may not be as safe as he thinks he is because I, as I was listening to the news this morning, I see that um, uh, Pence is starting a... Uh, would you call it the pre-organization for a possible run in 2020. Why? Because the uh, foundation of the 45th is starting to unravel. He has so much confounded our political news over this week. Every single thing that he said in his campaign that Hillary uh, uh, would do to us, he's, uh, he's done it hyperbolically. Uh, between the lies, the connection with uh, given far uh, foreign information uh, to to Russia, uh, foreign information that came from Israel, uh, lying on the head of the, the, the FBI, firing the FBI, firing the head, uh, uh, our assistant attorney general. The, the man came in a, a, as as a time bomb, and and I'm gonna throw the ball over to my Sora. Well, uh, I guess we're talking about the possibility of impeachment. I, I've I will agree with uh, um, Judge T that at this particular point, I don't necessarily see that being uh, an option. Indeed, I mean there is a lot out there, uh, as you as you've referred to, uh, in the water. There is a whole lot of blood in the water, but uh, right now nothing has really come to a conclusion. I don't know that he is really even guilty of anything that would be considered a high crime or a misdemeanor. No, he doesn't. Would, it doesn't but, have but, to be a crime high crime or misdemeanor or some other aspect of that would allow for the impeachment process. But what I do know is that the media, particularly uh, the quote-unquote liberal media, is uh, obsessed with his every move. And he gives them a lot for the theater of what I call infotainment, uh, which, which we call the news, something that was uh, created some years back by someone who just uh, left this earth. Roger Ailes, Fox started all of this. It was more on the conservative bent. And then the quote-unquote other media, liberal media, kind of jumped on that bandwagon. So um, Trump is uh, is clearly a victim not only of his, he shoots himself in the foot regularly, but he's also a victim of... Um, Narcissism. This, well, he's also a victim And of, that's not a victim, that's a uh -huh. sickness. He's well, also a victim of this media that just... So listen, when we come I'll back from the yeah, 11 o'clock break, that, right, yes. um, we're going to talk about that. I mm -hmm. want to know how you differ. And then I also want to discuss my theory, which is that I think that the Democrats are just trying to keep their base engaged for the off-year elections. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a way for them to be able to do that. So, oh, man, is this our, our yeah, Water this King? Is, this is our Water so King right here. This is our sponsor, um, and uh, he's bringing in the antioxidant water. Uh, right. it, so that we can hydrate ourselves, brother. I appreciate you, man. Nine point five. Uh, and we'll be right. Ph nine point five. We'll be right back. Radio ninety four point three. Bring it. Dance hall. Soca. Hip hop and R and B. African. I don't want. I don't want to drink it. Disco. Oldies but good. Hi, this is Jenny Jackson. We are breaking the game. Seriously. Blast Radio 94.3 New Jersey. Hey, did you see that?
that post online about Julie? I totally wrote it. Wasn't it hilarious? Is all of that true? Who cares? She's done anyways. Are you talking about that post about Julie? Yeah. Funny, right? No, but that post about you was. What post? Oh, you didn't hear? You're fat, you're ugly, you're stupid. And oh yeah, you smell too. The whole school saw it. No big deal. That's so mean. Did they really write that about me? No. But how does it feel? Sometimes you can feel all alone when being bullied. And that's when you can really use a friend. If you see someone or know someone that's being bullied online, let them know they're not alone. Stand up now, support a friend, and save a life. For more information on cyberbullying, visit stopthemean.wordpress.com or call the hotline at 1 800 555 STOP. A message from your friends here at Splash Radio. You would not believe that half of the people on Fox are Hi, this is Mick Moomin moving black truck for rent for all your life moving needs anywhere within the North East Orange, Irvington Orange areas. Fifty dollars a trip from Monday through Thursday. Sixty dollars from Friday through Sunday. Call eight six two two seven nine nine three zero zero. That's 862-279-9300. Okay, right there. All right. Are we going to give him a little plug? Yeah, we're going to give him a little plug. Splash Radio. 94.3. Is that it? Ready. Dance hall, soca, hip hop and R and B, African, disco, oldies but goodies. Hi, this is Janet Jackson. We're bridging the gap. Seriously, Flash Radio 94.3, New Jersey. Well done, no Sammy said she represent for 94.3 FM Splash Radio. We don't splash out the music on them. You're listening to the Eric Dawson Radio Show on 94.3 FM. All right, so we're back. We're and, back. Uh, um, and we, hydrated. And we're, and we're hydrated. And we want to thank uh, our, uh, Amir uh, for helping hydrate us. Uh, he is a sponsor of the Eric Dawson Radio Show, and uh, we're all drinking our uh, our Alkazone water. Thank Good you, stuff. brother. Nine. Thank you. Nine point five. Yeah. You know what? Hey, hey, uh, I mean, uh, just just give a little um, so people understand um, the different levels of water. Right, because Rosalind was saying that uh, that that the Poland Spring well, is, is told well, to not, be well. It's not dude, dog on the bread. Yeah, because. <laughs> I, I don't feel like going to court right now, but let's but let's just talk about no, why, no, why ours is better. Oh right, well we have attorneys here, so yeah, I I'm guess just, yes. gonna, I'm just we're, we're, we're not. To keep well, but we can put his brand water up because he's here. Right. We just but I want you to ex- but I want you to explain the differences. Yeah. yeah. The difference is that most other waters are acidic, and our diets also contribute to a large level of acidity in our bodies. Most of the waters that we drink do not have uh, minerals in it. The natural minerals that are required for us to be healthy. This water has five um, major minerals, uh, uh, alkaline minerals that is. Magnesium, calcium, zinc, potassium, and selenium. No other bottle of water has that. All right. All right. Plain plain and simple. Thank you. you. Uh, Now, do we cover all legal stuff? Not absolutely sure. I just know that it's my opinion that that stuff over there is, is not as good as this. Now, how, one does, how, do you, how does this taste, lady? It tastes it's great. I mean, and I like room. I like my water room temperature mm-hmm. first of all. Uh, and Roz will tell you, I'm not a big water person. So it, it, the fact that I can guzzle this down tells you that it has to be good because I don't smooth. drink water. Yeah, that's right. Well, smooth. that's what it says. It's smooth. Yes, yes. yes. crisp, clean, and it's smooth. Crisp, it absolutely is. Well, there you go. Well, and thanks, and thanks for dropping us off for us, because we were definitely parts, and it's like hot. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Well, appreciate you, man. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. So, but and before, go ahead, spe- I'm sorry. speaking of hot, because the ladies add to that. Uh oh. I had to throw that in. Just I had loaded. to throw that in. I had <laughs> to throw that in. Loaded. I had to throw that in. I mean, loaded. Men, you can. Hey, you can feel some kind of way, loaded. and I don't blame you. I mean, I'm feeling kind of good right now, but. But we were leading. We were uh, speaking of before the break, in regards to uh, President Number Forty Five, Donald Trump, uh, 
going to be. No, well, I, I don't think the judge even no, refers the 45th. to the president. Well, I understand. I said to the that, White House. I have to say that for all the listeners. Yes. Because some listeners you don't know, know that he's the 45th, then we, we need to go back to civics class. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. That's all I'm. I'm just pointing well, out. I think what I was saying is that uh, uh, Attorney Roz was saying that he is a victim of. He is a victim of himself. Well, I said that he uh, shoots himself in the foot. Th- yeah, too, but he's but. he's no victim. He is he is no victim. This man has set up this country for the exact place that we are in. He said in the beginning, I will go back to Maya Angelou when a man tells you who he is or she is. Believe them the first time. He said that he could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody dead and he nothing would happen. Well, America, he has just stood in the middle of the White House on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue and has shot America and we are slowly dying unless we can resuscitate ourselves quick, fast, and in a hurry. What has he done? Yeah. The, be, between the given information, uh, the, 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 the colluding that he continues to say that he's not doing with the Russians. But wait a minute, didn't the FBI say that there was no evidence of... N- no, the FBI, FBI has well, not well, said well, the anything. the investigation is ongoing, but I will, to your point, nothing has come to a conclusion. And there's a lot of just... Speculation. Speculation, innuendo, just enough out there to allow certain people, if they want to, to come to certain conclusions. And other folks, and I speak, depending on what side of the fence you happen to be mm-hmm. on, um, to come to the various conclusions. Now, I'm of the belief that at the end of the day, um, there's, there is something to this. However, it's serving a purpose. It is definitely serving a purpose. Uh, I, I want to go back to what he did. Okay. No, but, no, but yeah, I, I want to hear Judge T talk about what he did. But okay, I, and, and I just and, and 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 for the and for the audience and everybody out there, I want you and I hope you're listening because I want you to realize that we have two ladies here who 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 don't always agree, like myself and Eric, but yet and still they are able to get together and work together for. For, for a common cause, for the and, and I and I just and I just say that for everybody else because, unfortunately, I think I think our country and our culture has started to migrate with to a, in, a, in a way where people must only surround themselves with people that they like and always agree with, and in, in, in order to do something and, and 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 or accomplish something. And I just wanted to show. I'm gonna hold hands now. Well. I'm just saying. I'm just saying because, because, because they, you know, I mean, some people don't know how to. I mean, some people don't know how to be around different. Yes. Some people don't know how to be around different. Because I wasn't here when you were for Bernie Sanders, Sanders, and I wish I was. Now I voted oh, for Bernie Sanders too. Oh, so now you're I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you. We can get that on another day. We can get that, but let hey, hey, look. I can say this. I can easily defend my choice for Bernie Sanders and I can have a list of reasons why I would go for in his a lot of the times for a lot you know for me a lot of the Hillary supporters they own the only argument serious argument that they had is that she's better than Trump and for me that's not a good enough reason to vote for you right is that that you're better than that person I want to know that's not my reason. I want to know that you're the best Candidate, not the best candidate who may win in some people's eyes, but you were the best per- because. So wait, know, wait, 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 wait! Before we do this, because I think that we're going to go on the yeah, Hillary Clinton, Bernie do Sanders I thing, do and I, I still want to hear the hear judges' uh, list of things that uh, that Forty Fifth did. Okay, we 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 can go back and and you can rerun everything he said about Hillary with regards to. Uh, he said that uh, the fact that she possibly threw her. Uh, emails uh, allow foreign entities to uh, gather Mm -hmm. uh, secret information. Well, this man, when he was nominated, President Obama uh, uh, came to him in his first briefing and explained to him that Flint may be compromised because he has dealings with the Russians. Now, this was before inauguration. It was before, actually, even uh, the new year. On January 4th, it's known now that Flynn t- 
told uh, the 45th that he was under investigation. Now, it doesn't even matter what investigation. If, the, if somebody tells you that they're under investigation by the FBI, possibly that's not a person that you want to choose for the second highest position, which is the National Security Advisor. But is that illegal? Oh, hold on. You're, it, you are putting in, you remember the whole uh, uh, the, the premise of what people feel that is going on, and I, I don't even think we have time. Uh, uh, Wilbur Ross, who he appointed as uh, Commerce Commission, Wilbur Ross was the president of Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is the biggest lender to Donald Trump, and that Deutsche Bank investigation was being investigated by Preet Bharara, who, who is the attorney general that uh, that the 45th had in Florida with uh, one of the oligarchs in Russia. He gave him a hundred thousand, a hundred million dollars for a house that uh, Donald Trump only paid thirty million dollars. Okay, then we can jump on to Manafort. Uh, Carter Page, all of these people, and Flynn, who he gave the highest office that a president can appoint, has connections to Russia. This man has not shown his taxes. The only way that we will, he can really vindicate himself is by showing us that he has no business. He has over uh, two or three hundred patents around the world. He has hotels around the world, mm -hmm. places where we will be dealing with. We already had his his uh, his son-in-law's sister over in China selling visas for a half a million dollars using him as a prop. So I, I, I can't even talk fast enough to amount of improprieties that we have, and that the and the the one thing and the reason why I brought up that uh, that Pence is starting a. Uh, a, a query team with regards to uh, his possible run for presidency is because the vice president can actually, through the 25th Amendment, indicate if he feels that the president is not fit. It does not mean that he's crazy. It means that if you're so narcissistic that you cannot listen to those who are telling you what's right and wrong, and obviously people are telling him that he's choosing not to listen, um, then he can bring up the, the 25th Amendment for an impeachment, and then it goes to the Senate. But this is this absolutely such a, a uh, plethora of things that he has done wrong. But, I mean, firing Comey, yes, he can, but has it ever been done? Never in history. This is the man who was know. investigating Bill Clinton, you. Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton uh, he fired, um, he fired the uh, director of the FBI. No, he fired the, the, the director of the FBI because he was found be using funds for his own personal use. You are absolutely right. He actually was committing crimes while he was in office. Comey, it wasn't because of any investigation. When, you're, when, the, when, when the 45th actually said he fired him because of his, this Russia thing and that it's all a hoax and you are the Russian thing, you're basically saying, let me chop off the feet of the man who is investigating me mm -hmm. like he did with Preet Bharara. Preet Bharara, who was the attorney general handling all things Trump in New York, he fired him after he said that he would be keeping him on as attorney general. So we're, we're talking about him. Uh, Sally Yates. Sally Yates goes to him and tells him again about Flynn on the 26th. He goes uh, on the 26th. He calls, uh, he calls Comey in on a private meeting. The president does not talk to the, head, the director of the FBI directly. The president talks to the attorney general. Now, the attorney general has had to, he had to get himself out of, out of the, uh, the, the crosshairs because of the nonsense he was saying about Hillary. Then we picked uh -oh. an assistant attorney uh -oh. general. I, I think you piqued somebody's interest. Mm -hmm. Let's take this call. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. Good morning, caller. Last time. All right. Can you hear us? Let's go. We, we You are live on the radio. What's up? Oh, Lena, what? No, Lena, no, what's today? Uh, uh, no, wrong yeah, number. Wrong number. Here okay. <clears throat> so... So, so what I'm saying is is that he, uh, he, is, he is swimming in the mud. And so uh, commission and omission, you don't have to actually commit the crime. Mm -hmm. If you allow the crime to be committed and you're, you have knowledge of it, you can't continue to play stupid. Because even Flynn just recently said that the president called him and told him to hang in there and if at any possible time he can bring him back in, that he would. Come on. Well, I, I have no love for the 45th. Uh, it, and it has a lot not to do with what's going on presently, although what is going on presently, I guess, is one of the reasons that I... I but what I will say is that I have uh, I've had no respect for the 45th since that birther movement. And as far as I'm concerned, what's mm. happening to him today, whether it be true or false, is... Karma? His, it's karma. It's his birther movement. It, it's his birther movement, or at least somebody else's birther movement on him. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, as I said, there's a lot of smoke out there. And... 
clearly what they say is where there's smoke, there's fire. Um, so he's got some issues. And I, what disturbs me is that we spend daily time uh, dealing, talking about, about Trump. About Trump. He's, 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 and let's he, he is stuck in the air out of the room. He mm -hmm. really is. All right. So, so on that note, and we, we do say that, and we, we, we even pointed it out. The fact of the matter is, much like much like Bush, during 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 Bush's Bush uh, W, during during his tenure, so shows like SNL, Bill Maher, and other political satire and other type shows and, and comedy shows, their ratings skyrocketed. And since Trump's, uh, uh, oh, they're making money off of Trump. I mean, they are making mad money off of Trump right now because. He's the gift that keeps on giving in, for every, in regards to entertainment. He's somebody that you can make fun of, laugh at, point jokes about. And, and that was not the case for for uh, President Obama so much other than just being able to, you know. Uh, can you I know. quickly say something? Because uh, this is the, one of the things that while we're sleeping and while we're giving all of our attention to uh, to the 45th, they are destroying health care right now. Mm -hmm. They are they are still on the way with trying to do this Muslim ban. But I, I want to speak to our brothers and sisters from Jamaica, Barbados, uh, all of the Caribbean who know you have a loved one or somebody who may not have their papers right. Don't think because you don't speak Spanish that they're not going to come after you. Because this is, uh, a, a, he, he has used... Uh, the uh, our, our Mexican brothers and sisters as the the the, the first right. uh, roundup, and then he's Wait, going to well, start. I want to ask you a you question, Judge. Do you believe that people should be here illegally? No, they're, they're, I, I'm not saying that. I, I believe that we must follow the law. Mm -hmm. um, but I do believe that dreamers, which are children that were brought here as babies, who are educated here, who have served in our military. Uh, should have the opportunity to get uh, citizenship. I'm not talking about folks who snuck over the borders because uh, that that's just that's well, just not know, fair. You know the the people that are here without papers. Um, it's not just a black and brown community. I mean, we've got uh, Thank you. Irish communities at, mm -hmm. throughout uh, this country where they just come over and their visa expires or however they may get here. I mean, it's not it's not limited to black and brown communities. Agreed. And um, what disturbs me about the quote-unquote Muslim ban, as well as any of this... Um, the application. This, exactly, the application. They're not... The if we're easily the identifiable. Black and brown people are easily, easily identifiable. identifiable. Mm -hmm. But somehow I don't think they're you going to Irish stop, and Italian stop and one a red-haired red individual who has been here for ages uh, illegally and deport that individual. Well, even your name. Remember, uh, Muhammad Ali's uh, uh, son and his mother was coming from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. They held him for six hours. Of course, yeah. I mean, he's American-born. His daddy was American-born. So uh, hypervigilance so with regard to the quote-unquote people, paperless yeah. people is, is uh, I wonder why now, and I wonder uh, why more more communities aren't saying, hey, I've got relatives here that are here are legal too. And, 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 and I, and I, Obama and deported I, and I, more, more people than any other president. Yes, he did. So it was deport, the, uh, the, the yes, whole deportation, did. it wasn't like it wasn't happening. He just had a better system and, and he made it palatable. Wait, so wait no, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm not sure, I'm but not sure but I just in regards to the better system aspect. I mean, well, I, I mean better I, system in that he got it done right, without well, all of the controversy. Well, well, my, and that's one of my problems with especially black and brown people and a lot of other people when it comes to the, to the Democratic Party that they tend to be able to do the same the same exact thing and get away with it without being sc scrutinized as much. My brother, please. But before, uh, let me, but we, I'm just, yeah. before we go there, yeah. I, I just want to, you know, and like I said to you before, Ian, I look up several different sources. This is just one source. I'm going to post it. You guys can look at it put other sources up there and then we'll figure it out. But this headline says trumped up charges up to 50,000 undocumented Irish facing deportation from the U.S. as Donald Trump vows to boot out illegal immigrants. So, I agree that it's not just brown people but if Donald Trump is saying you know what, any illegal 
uh, uh, immigrant. And that's where oh, that's why I said that President Obama had a difference. Since President Obama was not targeting any one group, though, and that and that's where the forty fifth went awry. I mean, even though it, it but, but even in his but application, but, but, but you don't hear this. application. You, you don't oh, hear no. this. But, 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 but is it that we don't hear it? But is it that we don't black and brown hear people it? deported? But is it because we're not hearing it? Is it because it, the narrative plays better if it's forty-fifth um, uh, attacking black and brown people, as opposed to forty-fifth? Attacking the illegal immigration issue, and, and that's what the difference. Uh, President the Obama was attacking the the, the immigration but the, system, but the media. But he says that I'm attacking illegal immigrants. The media then comes back and says that he's attacking black and brown people. So you're See, saying basically he's being sen sensationalized by, by the media. By, by by the the media. media. That's what but I'm, you, that's what I'm, I'm asking the question. Could that be? Why we don't hear about this? Well, well, see, the, the thing that President Obama did, he also mandated something, and this something that Trump reversed, the uh, where the the dreamers were not being deported. Now they're deporting dreamers, and and those right, are the ones that have been problem, here okay. since a baby. Okay. Now, but one of the other things, I mean, if we if we so want to go back, Obama for, made it more palatable. He but made it, it was still taking, but taking it out was black for and those. People. But if they were illegal, they're illegal, right? I mean, I mean, if you committed if you committed a, a high crime, um, we're not talking about traffic or not uh, mowing your lawn, a municipal court violation. We're talking about criminal offenses, and those are to be deported. And that doesn't mean just Mexicans. I, I don't care if you're from Russia, if you're from Ireland, if you're from England, wherever you're from. If you committed a crime, you're to be deported. So now I want to bring this back to local politics. We have a well, lot of cities who are talking about sanctuary, a lot of leaders who are talking about sanctuary cities. So right. now they're going head to head with the administration. And the administration is saying, you know what, we're going to withhold federal funding, right, from you uh, if you um, don't comply. And, and so a lot of these uh, communities um, could desperately use these resources that are going to be with help. Well, again, his last about, ban, I well, got well, sure that's well, going to be shot down. Again, if uh, I do believe that the, that if that moves forward, it will be challenged in the courts, the federal courts. Not sure how they're going to make out. Well, but if they uh, do anything like his but, last challenge. But again, you know, the politicians now say, "Oh, blah blah blah, we're sanctuary cities." Well, you know. I worked in the prosecutor's office, and there have always been illegals within uh, the area, people, paperless people. And quite frankly, I don't necessarily think that Nork or any of these communities were sanctuary cities. They just didn't have the manpower to do the federal government's job. You hire, you arrest someone who's paperless, you process that individual. So what the next responsibility is now I have to also be an immigration officer. Now I have to function as an ICE officer. Uh, it's just easy not to do anything. Well, you let, just let process me, the individual. Right. And move the ahead. hypocrisy is crazy because because the 45th uh, if you go into his hotels and you go in those rooms, they're nothing but Mexicans cutting his grass in. Yeah, we and, don't know and, that they're legal or illegal. But my point is, someone did go and card some of the folks that were or were building that property across the street from the White House and found out that many of them were uh, illegal. And uh, his properties in Nevada during the well, you uh, know, the election. You, know, you know, well, I'll, I'll look right, at so it as, a, as an employer um, okay. from time to time. You know, you. There's certain questions you can't ask of people, and then similarly, those same folks have fake, 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 fake identification, fake identification social security numbers, things of that. So, and I'm not suggesting that the 45th doesn't know that he's got illegals on his property, but what I am saying is that it, there's a way to fit in. Right, do you so, think so that these I, communities are ready to deal with um, not having these resources? Because again, it's one thing for. Of course not. Well. Well, you understand what I'm saying? So that's the impact. And I don't know that these uh, elected officials in these urban communities who are talking about um, having these sanctuary cities are really sharing with their constituents what that would mean right. if these federal dollars were, um, well, were withheld. You know, I'm, I, I, again, I want to take advantage of the brain of these two sisters that are here. And I want to not just focus on Trump so much and a lot of his thing. The, the other thing I'm curious, because we kind of touched upon it yesterday, there are a few people such as, um, say, say some of the whistleblowers, 
mm-hmm. you know, some who just got released and, 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 and things of that nature. What is your uh, position on that from a legal standpoint? On Manning? You, like on Chelsea like? Manning mm-hmm. and, and others. Uh, well, Bradley, Snowden. Bradley or Chelsea? Uh, Chelsea. I, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to uh, uh, give the respect of the name that she. Well, that, I'm, that I'm she specifically chooses. because Ian and I have gone back and well, forth. Well, we've with we've debated on that, but but Chelsea Manning, you know, Snowden and other whistleblowers such as that, uh, such such as them. I'm curious to know your position from a legal standpoint and also from. I guess from a legal and and, and, a, and a civilian standpoint. Well, Snowden just went to the wrong country. <laughs> he he went, when he went to Russia, he, he he basically baked himself, because once he gets there, the, the American government is definitely not going to uh, re- receive him back and not think that he's not coming back tainted. Gotcha. Uh, and and with, gotcha. uh, with as as with uh, Chelsea Manning, Chelsea Manning went through the the judicial system and was convicted. The difference between Chelsea Manning and and, and past folks, because remember she went through a military uh, uh, court first mm-hmm. and was found not guilty of the most serious charges. Mm-hmm. Uh, the least of those charges were were handed in federal court, um, and on other occasions the sentence of what she received had been in the past no more than than ten years. She got thirty years. And so President Obama, uh, at the 11th hour, he didn't say that she was innocent. What he said is, is that based on the norms and the average of sentences that have been given to those equal to her, um, that she has served more than enough time, and he then commuted her sentence. She, well, from a legal and she actually served longer than anybody else mm-hmm. from that particular for that for that particular, particular crime. Yeah. In history. From a legal standpoint, these individuals did indeed break the law. They released information that they were not supposed to to the public. But I guess your question is, from a a moral standpoint as well as from a citizen's point of view, both of these individuals, in their mind, believe they were informing the American aspects. We don't. Not in those particular realms. Not in the area of espionage. Not in anything that deals with national security or um, what may be considered... um, our right to privacy or lack thereof. So I, I think that's the greater I, debate in terms of how do we become familiar with It's uh, just like you, you yeah, have exactly. a... So, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to let I'm you... Sorry. You know, my, my thing is, I'm okay with you hitting me over the head for something that I didn't do, but if you don't give me a path, a, a, a path that I can take, you know, or, 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 say, or say if one doesn't exist, how can, how can you then punish me for just for you know for taking any path. Well, you can. Well, but punished. you know what? The question is, should Stop. there be but, a but path? You, but, you, but, but, but if you use that theory, then what you can say to a poor person growing up in a community, well, you didn't give me a path to be able to be successful, and so I don't have a job, Hi. and so now I'm going to go to the corner store and I'm going to rob them for a loaf of bread because I didn't have any other choice. So I. Well, you ask the women in Fox, why did they stay there so many years under Roger Ailes and and, and Bill O'Reilly? You know what? It's, it's for a lot of people, it's survival. In their position, they had top secret information, a- a- and no one has to, can can believe that WikiLeaks is in the best interest of the United States. So, I, if you had, I do believe that the government should set up a system where where those who believe that there's a possibility that things are going on that are awry, where they can anonymously send in that information. If they're going to do something, it's a whole nother thing. But 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 why should give it to them? They may end up talking to the court. I mean, talking to... Those women called in, and their calls were hung up on for all intents. But you know what? Those women called in... Remember I say the the hens in the fox house? Yeah. Well, if the fox is the one who... Uh, who were bringing in the hens, you can't complain to the fox. Well, the fox is going to eat you some up. Anonymous there phone call within the, within the government itself the, might be, okay, the, the, There needs him. to be an outside, so, uh, okay. uh, when, it comes uh, to gov- when it comes to governmental okay. leaks, it may be the, uh, a suggestion, and, and, mm-hmm. and maybe we'll just throw it out there for any of the governmental officials who are listening. Maybe there needs to be a government hotline where you can give information and stay anonymous. Now we know that just about with the with with the uh, with the ability. But the question to that is asking, well, let's say you give that problem, information problem, and then it's not acted upon. Yeah, but that, and that's my problem. Pretty you can't much save the world. Well, right. Well, but but the problem I have similarly, and I, and I mentioned it yesterday. For example, we talk about was a lot of bad bad policing going on out here, and then we have the police investigating themselves, and a lot of times it ends up nowhere. 
So here, I guess here's the that's, question. That's, to that's get a my problem. Here. Is do we really have? Is it is it is it our job as a as a human being on this planet, as a as 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 a as a global citizen, to let the rest of our citizens know what the heck is going on? Now, if you don't well, care about self preservation. <laughs> because well. you you need to know that when you do that, when you give information to a foreign entity, that you're committing treason. No, no, and I'm not talking about foreign entity. Aspect. WikiLeaks I'm is a foreign about, entity. No, no, I'm, I'm speaking of if you want, if you, if we want to let our American citizens, for for example, know that our government. So you is have access is illegally, but, but, start is by, but start off by saying that you have access to classified information, right? And then you now want to give that classified information to somebody else. Well, That's what you're asking. Classified well, is well, classified somebody, for a reason. And but somebody but the person in power can determine whether on how they choose the what what stamp they put on that piece of paper. It could be something about I'm gonna go to the bathroom to, in five minutes and somebody stamp stamp classified on it, all of a sudden, that's a classified but a rule, information. That's not, that's but, not a, but, but a rule that's becomes a rule. If, it's cla if you're leaking, disseminating classified information without authority, um, you got a problem. You Cointel 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 Pro Co COINTELPRO was a, was a, was a, was a, was a, a classified operation. But, mm -hmm. but was it? But was it? But was it an operation that should have been a legal operation? Should that operation have been allowed on American citizens at all, and should somebody have not been able to just talk about that? Because because we're talking about you're talking, I, you got to ask about who's talking about it. In if you're a government official, you are sworn you just like the president, FBI, CIA, even the prosecutors. As a public defender, we do not have to swear an oath to the Constitution. A public defender, prosecutor, FBI, NC, uh, 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 um, NSA, they have to swear to the Constitution to uphold the law mm -hmm. and that information therein. So if you, once you swear to the government of the, of the United States of America, that's why the uh, 45 guys are confused because he thinks people swore to him. They didn't swear to him. They swore to the Constitution. And these people that are in these federal positions, unfortunately, and I understand what you're saying, once you swear under oath to keep those things private, you cannot then um, expose it to people and, outside of the government. if you do, you'd be ready to bounce like Snowden did. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and that's just the law. Yeah. We don't have to like it. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't have to like the law even as a judge. And, and you cringe, but you swore an oath to follow the law. So you swore so to follow it. let's bring it local, because all politics are local. Yes, it is. If you want to change it, okay. right, you have to begin to focus on local politics, which affect county politics, which, which affect state, state politics, politics, and now you can affect federal national. and national stuff. Yes. But, but you can't go, you want to go to the attic, and you want to start building the house. You can't. You got to look at how the foundation is rotted out. And we have to start there. You can't just say, you know what, I want to be up here and I want to just do this. Well, see, both Snowden and uh, and and the other one, they, they, they were young people in their 20s. You know, uh, and young minds, um, are, I think, are, are, are not mature enough, really, no matter how smart they are. When you're going into a system of barracudas, and and if, and if you once you decide you want to work in the FBI, you, once you want to do what Roz and I did, you working in the in the in the prosecutor's office or the public defender's office, you got to understand where you are. Sitting on the bench when I took that oath, you have to understand where you are. And there are certain rules that must be followed. Now, that if you choose to stay in that position, I you have agree to follow with them. you. However, that is how revolutions have started. I mean, what happens is that we get in these positions, and if Theoretically, we are silenced. Mm -hmm. So, yes, mm -hmm. it's easier to change the system from... It sounds like it's easier to change the system from but outside, it but it's not. But within, it can be. Um, but then, I think this kind I, of... Then, uh, I, then, I, then, I, then, then I guess that means that the laws themselves should be challenged. Because, I, because sometimes a lot of people, you know... They should and, be and challenged, I, but, but, again, where you, and and but where do you challenge them? And At what level do you challenge the law? Well, that that becomes well, the question. Well, I think everybody here will agree that everything legal is not right. And Correct. We agree to that. Okay. So, because there was a law that we were three, three fifths, right. et cetera, we, we, so uh, on, we right? Got, there right. was an understanding of these things. So, we don't have any forefathers. But, but, now, but now the question is, if 
if we're going to challenge it, we can't play always play by the rules that they set up for us to challenge it because it's then up. don't work for them. Right, that's you cannot thinking, work for them. I'm then. thinking that's where you, why you work but, your pri work in private industry. You but, are an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it uh, provides you a okay, certain amount of freedom. Well, 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 I'm going to say this: Snowden, when he took the job that he took, he didn't go there with the understanding and premise that he was going to fall upon some information. That he saw. No, 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 no. He didn't. No, no, he no, 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 no. He didn't. He didn't go in saying, "I'm going to go." I, he didn't go in looking for this. To he didn't go in knowing he was going to find something that was that was that was uh, going on against American citizens of this country that he, you know, that that he saw as as being a pulley. And he he, 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 didn't he, know he, that. he needed to take the chain but of command. But once he did, but he did attempt that first. Well, well then he, but he, what he does, then he should have stepped away. Then he's if, done. Then if, 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 his, if his consciousness says that, you know what, I can't do this and live with myself, then you need to step away from it. Or do and it then, in balance. Because once you, <laughs> because once you put it out, he could have did it in balance and they would have still come after him. You, you, you have to understand, the, the United States of America, we have never been the clean, uh, as squeaky clean as the world might think. You you understand? We are a foundation of slavery. We didn't st when 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 those white men were signing that uh, Declaration of Independence, they weren't thinking about black people. They weren't thinking about women. So even when they were signing that, when you know, because every time President Obama used to give homage to Lincoln, my head used to just bonker. But yeah, Lincoln I, I did not free that. one black person from the Emancipation Proclamation. I understand that. Well, so we yeah. have to know that you, if you're going to be, if you're going to be in the system, you got to understand the system and you got to work within the system. Okay, mm -hmm. right, uh, caller, caller, you're in the air. Hello, um, fellas. This is Spark. How you doing, Eric? How you doing, Ian? Hey, what's going on, man? Hello. 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 I just want to say, Eric, Eric you had made a comment um, a, a second ago. I think you challenge the government on every level and at, at any instance in which they are doing something inappropriate. So you, you don't ever let it go past. If there's an injustice and you stand by and you watching it, then you're just as much the problem. You gotta stop it as soon as you see it. You gotta call it for what it is. Otherwise, it becomes an institution of habit. But here, here, here okay, and it okay, is indeed, and it is an, indeed an institution of habit. And the question is, at what, what, at what personal sacrifice um, will will the average individual? Uh, undertake something of that nature. What support after but all was said and done? My suggestion is, is, is they're this. going to. A lot of well, my heroes. Be for you. A lot of my heroes have 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 sacrificed their own personal it's, freedoms. Mm -hmm. And I mean, people. A lot of the people that we that that we pay homage to to include the the man himself, whose whose birthday is today, yes. Malcolm X. All of them have so, died, uh, or have been so, killed. So. I mean, okay, Muhammad Ali also put himself out there, and many other people, heroes of ours, put themselves out there for a greater cause and reason to bring light and attention to, to an injustice. And as the saying goes, injustice every, anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And, it's, and, 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 and anything else, and, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, if I am around witnessing a crime or I see something in the crime, even if I don't have my hands in a cookie jar, if I, if I, if I may... If I may have just been driver of the car, not knowing my friends were going in there to go ahead and rob it. If I had no knowledge, they just asked me to take them, take them to the Conspiracy. store. Am I also, am I not going to sit there as as a darn co-defendant of theirs? So, of is, your I am. so is your so question now, that, so that so because Snowden, Snowden saw that and didn't Snowden say anything, and it's that wrong. he is conspiring with the government to Does do he, this Then he needed thing. to step away. Be, because it's on his conscience. Because now I'm like, now I know this is going you on. Can't, you, then that's not the job for you, dude. But you can't work there. But he didn't. But he again, he didn't take the job on with us. Uh, once with you understood and that, because he didn't just one day decide that he was going to do this. See, and, and we went back like we were talking about Malcolm X. Malcolm X is no longer with us. Martin Luther King is no longer with us. And it is very coincidental. They were taken from us. Exactly, and okay. it's very coincidental that two of the fighters for the Black Lives Matter in the last year. Have one has supposedly committed suicide, and other one died very mysteriously. So we have to understand that uh, we how you do something. I mean, it's, it's like a Tupac Biggie thing. Nobody knows how those two brothers uh, came off this earth, and nobody even investigated. And what am I saying is, is that if you're going to if you're going to make that move, don't do it solo. 
You need to get some. See, they can't arrest all of us, but they can arrest one. So if you're going to have that kind of information, you may want to go, and, and who's to say who you can trust and you can't trust? I don't know if Snowden believed he could trust anyone. But the, 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 the fact is, is that we live in a government of laws, and we don't, we don't necessarily like the laws, but when it comes to the security of the nation and what those things that they believe should not be given to foreign entities, that's a big when you want to give something away, dude, you can't go, you can't give it to a foreign. And, and here's the other question. Well, let me let me make this point. Okay. So here's the other thing, and I said this to Ian yesterday. Based on uh, on on saying we want to have a whistleblower law, we want to be able to have people who have access to classified information yeah, no, right. and be able to give it out. Without now we're asking that we're trusting that the person who is evaluating and assessing the information, we're now leaning heavily on their values, right? What they personally deem to be inappropriate, that they don't accept. And there's no standard for that. I'm and not so sure you, that there's not a standard for how they, how they evaluate um, no, various I'm saying forms the in, of No, I'm saying the individual. So okay. Snowden, Snowden had a certain sensitivity, okay. and when he got to a certain level, he said, okay, I need to get this out. Now you may have, and then you had... Um, uh, um, who's the the one who Obama pardoned? Manning. Manning, Chelsea who did the Manning. same thing. Chelsea Manning, right? A uh, certain level of sensitivity, certain values. There and was when also a CIA analyst for fourteen years. Right, but but, well, but, 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 but but my but point is, that. so, so if so I'm there, there, if I'm raised. there, right, mm -hmm. I may have a higher tolerance, right, or tolerance my tolerance, for, tolerance for, for, for what I for deem injustice. to be for injustice, right? right? Because because if I have a greater understanding of how this information impacts us. Um, on a, uh, uh, in terms of our national security and things that, that are going on across the world, that because this thing is happening, we're able to have certain securities and comforts here. And I look and go, well, that makes sense to me. It might not make sense to you. So who makes the determination at that point about what should be released? But it's just like, it's, it's like, it's just like the 45th when he called Comey in to speak to him privately. That is not appropriate. You cannot call, the, the president cannot call in the FBI one-on-one. -on -one. So the, what, when, you, when you ask me what did Trump do wrong, well, one of the things you did wrong and is to speak to the, uh, the, the head investigator, which is the head uh, investigator because the head prosecutor is the attorney general. The attorney general left out of the room. We, we're talking about there are checks and balances, and unfortunately oh, you have to use the system in the way its checks and balances are. In, in the are. backdrop of the circumstance, meaning that his administration was being investigated, but I mean that's clearly uh, the president can speak with the FBI director one-on-one, -on -one. but it just so happens that this particular president is under invest at least he and his campaign are under investigation as well as well, uh, I, I beg to differ, Sora, because under under uh, Holder, Holder made a he made a a, uh, a a system of hierarchy and how uh, things are to be discussed. And the FBI was told under his administration that you do not speak to the president one on one. If you have any discussion, so you must Comey, go through. Why, why was Comey speaking to him then? Well, the, then, then why was Comey? But but Comey why didn't actually Comey step back. I mean, but not Comey to say that asked. Trump. He asked before he went because at the end of the day, uh, the the Keebler elf was in the room. Mm -hmm. Now the Keebler elf is is uh, uh, Jeff Beauregard, Beauregard Jefferson Sessions. 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 Sessions should have never left the room. Because the, the way the hierarchy is, if the FBI director has an issue, he's to go to the, uh, the to, to Sessions, who is the highest attorney. Basically, the FBI is an investigator. Yeah. They investigate if the president is being investigated. But that's the backdrop under which this so is happening. So whether he the can is not a question. He can, but is it appropriate? Well, that's what I just said. Yes. In light of the circumstances, because he's being investigated, you were saying he can't go in there, period. But the, so, but the system so. of balances has in, in the FBI is that you don't. That's why Comey wrote everything down that mm -hmm. was being said, because Comey knew he was uncomfortable about this dinner. But Comey is, just one, is that dude also. He writes down everything and every conversation he has with everybody and under any circumstance. And, and That's this what situation is the best thing he could have ever done. Yes. And yes. so now, we're, we're, again, we're having the conversation about Comey, about 45. Um, but okay. here, and, locally, and we have a gubernatorial a race that's coming up. Okay. Right? And and what I would say is this, that if, if um, Democrats 
had their house in order, uh, we might not have 45 right now. Uh, New Jersey being having one of the, if not the most influential and powerful governors in the land. Yes. Right. We're now embarking on uh, this determining whether or not we're going to have a Democrat or Republican for governor. Uh, that's going to be uh, well. The primary is in June next month, mm -hmm. and then we have the general election. Um, what are your thoughts about the candidates and, and well, Giordano for the Republicans is is like they were trying to say with Hillary for uh, President Obama. She's only an extension of Christie. I uh, am personally uh, uh, supporting uh, Murphy uh, as I, I as I am with Green and, and East Orange, and uh, and I and I'm not uh, going for Murphy because. He just happens to be a, a Democrat. I actually sat down and had a conversation with him and, and, and his lovely wife as to what is their intentions with regards to the African American community. And I, uh, I'm interested in how they responded. Well, the one of the things is that because my uh, uh, my discussion was really about uh, the, uh, the 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 laws with regards to the arrest and and the improportionate uh, arrest uh, within the African American community. So I hope you told them what they need to do. No, I, I told them my, from, from my perspective from what they needed to do because I think that's part of the problem. From my we perspective, we go there and go, hey, what you gonna do? And then we're well, but we. Go he came. To my, he was he was in go my church a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he got bombarded. Uh, with questions from the community, because see, we in the black church uh, have—that's where we lost. Because our politics used to come from our churches, and we stopped doing that. We have become so neutral. But uh, 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 but back to to Murphy. I mean, uh, you have this. What was his name? John Johnson or James Johnson from Montclair? Jim Johnson. Yeah, Jim yeah, Johnson. Th this brother came out at the eleventh hour. Mm -hmm. I don't know any anything uh, uh, about him uh, other than he, he lives in Montclair. The uh, the thing that with uh, Murphy, he's been out there for two years, and I have not be again. A lot of people are not going for Murphy because they say, "Oh, he's like a Corzon. It's about his money." Well, y you know what? Then then we need to but stop I, I, all together. So, the, but there are people in the community, and I'd like to get your your mm -hmm. take to Rosalyn. But there are people in the community um, that I've spoken to that are curious about why you have a an African American who's running for governor in the African American community who Murphy says he needs in order to win. Why that African American community isn't coalescing around an African American. Why? Well Because he's black? Well oh, no well, no no not primarily because he's black. But when we talk about whether we're talking about schools or other kinds of things and, and having African Americans as teachers because they understand certain nuances about our community in a way that other people may not, um, that they're saying, Well, you know, did the did the black churches and did all the other people at least give this guy an opportunity? before they went to Murphy to say, hey, listen, maybe maybe he shares experiences with us and could, from a visceral level, uh, understand what it is that we're, what we're dealing with. So just like the... I don't, I don't so, think so. So, so, my, my, so my question to you I'll, is... I'll let you go, Ross. Um, in terms of Phil Murphy, what your thoughts are about him, what your thoughts are about any of the candidates, and then what you believe the African-American community must do in order to have a seat at the table with regards to whoever may be. Every person who has come to my door on Jim Johnson has been in white. You guys thought you were talking to me. Go ahead, okay, go ahead. Okay, you, okay, know, okay. Okay. you just keep talking. I understand. You can talk. About okay. Well, I, I have no thoughts on any of these particular candidates. Mm. Um, in this respect, um, they have an uh, overall objective, and that is to gain that office. And they come into our communities and they say, I need your vote, and we give them vote. Mm -hmm. But what do we get in exchange for that vote? Is, is right. my so question. Is What is my question? Now, um, Murphy and some of these other candidates was Nikki, Dragano, Kim Gord Lesnick. Gorgong, Lesnick. They've been out there for a long time. And uh, they've been running for a long time. And it, it's my understanding, at least with respect to, we also got to look at the polls because there was a debate recently. And I understand it was Nikki is closing in uh, on because nobody knows who Paul, who Murphy actually is in the general electorate. Mm -hmm. You know, he's been out there with a lot of ads and he said a lot of kind words. And mm -hmm. but um, he worked on the who's Obama who's administration. Who? So and um, but how do we approach this individual? Do we go to him and say, "Here's my coalition. This is my platform. You can have our votes if 
X, Y, and Z. But when and they go know, out and speak, then you have to go. <laughs> the deals are being made, not in those audiences. The deals are being made behind closed doors. But if you doors have questions... Question, you know, th that's just like the I mean, one vote lever. Come what on, power base do we approach these politicians with? Exactly. This is the game. Uh, this is the game that they have. That one vote, okay, great. They <clears throat> forget about it. But uh, what power base I, do and we And I utilize? always say that. I, I, I say that, w that your vote, your individual vote doesn't mean anything. In fact, if you look at how the election is shaped up, you had power bosses across the uh, across New Jersey uh, telling telling uh, the candidates essentially, I, I you know I'm good for ten thousand votes for you. I'm good mm -hmm. for fifteen thousand votes for you. And how do you know that any of those people in the community are, are allowing you to count their vote as your vote to him to leverage for whatever it is you just got well, from? Let's him. not be ignorant to politics, okay? That politics is what politics is. Uh, uh, Johnson from from Montclair, um, uh, and, and talk about because he's a brother. His wife is white, and every person that's come right. to my house on his behalf has been white. Right. I have not seen him anywhere in the black church or the black community. So if you if you are trying and 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 uh, if you want to uh, use and, I, and President Obama is half white, so it's not that's not an issue. But myself, my thing is is that you've been outside of the African American community so long. What do you? What have you obtained that you want to give back to the community from when well, you came? Well, let's so, look at the history. This is what I've seen. Mm -hmm. I've been in New Jersey all of my life. I've, I've kind of looked at politics on the periphery for a long time. And I see that we continuously go to these functions and we pay our money, but ultimately that power boss who indicates that he is going to be able to deliver 10, 15, he is the one who gets, mm -hmm. and we get nothing. Or crumbs. Mm -hmm. Um so-and-so get the multi-million dollar contract for their for their company and be in a position to hire all their friends. But do we and ask for anything? Because I'm, I'm well, going, that's the I'm, point. I'm supporting, I'm, I'm that's supporting the point. Phil Murphy mm. for a reason. That's so how, the point. But, how does the but, but are we asking for our community or are right. we asking for ourselves? When but you but if you do something in your community what, with, with what you are given, then you are giving back. When you have, oh. whether it's Murphy, Jim Johnson, Lesniak, Wisniewski, uh, Gradano, all of them at some point have to come to the black community because they need the vote out of here in order to win. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying we haven't done an adequate job leveraging the power that we have in our vote. And so how do we do that? We haven't done that on local I understand. state national and that was my and that's my that's my major problem with us especially with the democratic but i'm party saying how do we do it because 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 the fact of the matter is the fact but how do we do it well we're going to get to that but i'm saying the fact of the matter is the democratic party cannot win without our vote those are facts those are that's not that's not even a fiction or or even, or even upper debate and before you start so, to, uh, before so you keep going about the democratic the, party so no, let's talk about, wait, so before, that, before you so go before that, you, you do, keep talking i want you to keep talking about the democratic party but i want you to talk about it in this context okay. i want you to talk about all the folks who are part of the democratic party who brought chris christie into the black community three and a half years ago oh, yes. and said to the black community that they should vote for him and they threw Barbara Buono under the bus. That's okay. the Democratic Party. Okay. So talk about it in that context. Well, I'm going to talk about it in that context too. But My, my, my issue is and, and, and has always been, especially with us, we are in a position of power. And in any other type of position, when somebody needs you for their, for, for their, for their own success, you should ask them, what are you willing to give me for that? But we, but we don't. So, so it's, I mean, many of us sadly and wrongfully do, is we go on election day not knowing anything about anybody. And if we see the letter D for Democrat or anything, we're just voting I, straight I, down the line. How do we and we're change it? Giving away. But that's, that's our culture, sadly, how do we in our community. It? And I'm trying to shake folks to be like, why the hell are you giving away something without looking at the history of the individual that you are giving your way? But that's our culture? fault, brother. That's how do we fault. That's what we're saying. How, how do we, we say? We're doing that. We have, to, responsibility we, have to, we have to participate. We have to participate in a democratic uh, 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 body with our, you know. And, and somebody should earn our vote. But, we, but when, when they're having meetings, and uh, and 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 the, the president. You're not invited to that meeting. Not, exactly. But they are. They, those 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 meetings when the Democratic Party are having the meetings, they ha it is announced when the NAACP are having part. I get them on my phone. The meeting 
that's happening in the back, in the corner, but in see, the dark. Not, it's that, it's, we're not at those meetings. Look, so I was, the decision listen, I was, I was told a couple of months ago who was going to be, based on deals that were being made, who was going to be considered as the lieutenant governor. And that's all being worked out right now. And none of us at that table talking about it and what it means for us and what we benefit from it. But that conversation is already happening. And what's also happening are conversations about if this governor, if this candidate wins and becomes governor, how they're going to spread their tentacles and how they're going to get this one elected over here, how they're going to get that one elected. And it's not a conversation with us. And then once they have those discussions, then they send the people out into the community to gather up all of the folks like they do every have, year. Black people have been a me, me, me. We have been island folk uh, and literally island folk for a long time. If once we get something, there's very few of us who reach back and, and bring one up. And when, But we will, t- like they did with me, uh, I, I got up there when when Christy came at me to tear, my, tear me down. I, there there was not a black person to be found. I so need to my answer for the thing. So I think that we we need to continue. We we have to hold on to one another and actually say what we're going to do. When we bound and lock arms, we have to do it as a body. You have but to we register don't. people to vote. You have to. Re- I had uh, Mayor Morgan Gibson on the show. For the vote. It's like, it's but, like uh, but, but, but if you understand the way that the process said, works right now, the way the process works right now, Ian, is when candidates decide that they're going to run, they only talk to the current registered voters who have participated in previous elections. They don't engage anybody else in the community. And so it's an opportunity for people who want to elbow their way to the table to go and register and talk to the people that the that this current machine doesn't speak to. That's the way. Right, but, do. but but my thing is, it's more than registering. I mean, it could be like for you know, as as an example, somebody could come from another area and come in here and register themselves as a darn as a darn real estate agent. But do they know? Do they know the landscape? Do they know the neighborhoods? Do they know anything? So having somebody register to vote, yes, that's first. That's step number one. But do they know anything in regards to politics? Is anybody showing them? And do they know well, that's what, education? How to, right. Yes, that is education. That's education. So, and that's been part of my problem. And unfortunately, we're down in, in a minute and a half left. I mean, the time just fly. Why I was, why I chose, and probably why uh, Eric chose to go towards Bernie, looking at the history of the individual and their platform, consistent platform, by comparison and what they've done by comparison and why this man has earned my vote. Because if you lock arms with somebody looking like me and you in your 20s and you're getting arrested along, along with them at a time when it's not popular and, and, and you out there protesting and you marching with one of our, with you know, with you know with, with many of us and you've been consistently basically a civil rights activist in the form of either a congressman, a mayor, or and now, and now a senator, I see you in that capacity, which is why I gravitated towards him, and now, now the history on the other side that I saw, in my understanding, the relationship to you know to IHRC, the relationship to what went on with, you know, we know what happened with that freaking law in the '90s and everything else, uh, you know, as far as she how, was, how that was she was the wife. Yes, she was the wife, and mm-hmm. and uh, Libya, Honduras, but there's been a lot of. Uh, you know, and, and, and the stance My answer and, and is that the, we don't have a vote to wait. And the stance on fracking, the stance on the stance on the TPP. Thank you for having sisters in law on with you. Today. Yes, sisters in law. And, and please, you can hit us up on uh-huh. our Facebook page, Sisters and Law. S I S T A S. And uh, we have a YouTube channel with some tape shows, and we hope you will chime in on those. Radio. Ninety-four point three. Gosh, ready. I Dance. Soca. I'll be your producer. Hip hop and R and B. That was fun. That, it's just, it's just not enough time. And check it out. Eric and I used to.